Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're going to take a look at how we can hack our Nintendo DSi console. When modding your system, you unlock all sorts of different benefits like running emulators, you can watch movies, and you can also copy your DS games directly to your SD card. That is pretty cool. So if you don't have a Nintendo DSi, they're fairly cheap. I'll have links in the description if you want to go check some out. For this video, I followed a full guide online, which I'll leave a link in the description down below for you so you can take a look. Before we get started, you will need three different things. The first one is your SD card. I will be using an SD card adapter with a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Two, you must find a way to connect that SD card to your computer. And I do have a USB dongle that works just great. I'll have a link to this in the description down below if you need one. And three, you'll need a computer so you can properly format the SD card and also copy the files onto the SD card. So let's begin. First thing we're gonna do is format our SD card so connect it to your computer. Now if you come across this problem where I just bought a new SD card and the computer is not reading it properly. So what we're going to have to do down in your search bar, you want to start typing in the word disk and you want to choose the option that says create and format hard disk partitions. Here you can see that the SD card is not allocated so that's what we're going to do now. Go down to that disk drive and you want to right click and use the new simple volume. Follow the entire wizard setup as shown here, that way you can start using the SD card. As far as the settings go for this wizard, I would just change the disk drive letter just so that you have something that's easy to remember and I would just leave everything as is. Once it's finished allocating the SD card, your new folder should pop up, ready to go. Head on over to the first link in the description and I'll take you to Ridge Crop Consultants. And what you want to do is click on the picture that way you can start downloading the FAT32 format GUI for Windows. Once it's finished downloading, you want to open up the application and make sure the drive is selected to your SD card. You don't want to format your hard drive or your SSD or whatever you have on your computer. For the allocation unit size, you want to leave it as default and you want to start the format. The last thing we're going to do for the SD card format is go and check if there's any errors. So what we're going to do is find that drive and we want to right click and go down to properties. Hit the tools tab and then you want to hit check. That way the computer is going to check for any errors on your SD card. Now that we successfully formatted the SD card, we can go back on our DSi to make sure that the SD card is being read from our console. Now that the SD card is ready to go, we must find the version for our DSi console. And this is fairly easy, all you have to do is go into system settings. And on the top screen right below, you'll see version 1.4.4 as shown here. So just make sure you remember the version of your DSi for the next step. Let's remove our SD card and go back to our PC. The second link in the description will take you to the DSi guide and we have to download a certain file depending on the version you have. Scroll down to memory pit and you want to select the version that fits your DSi console. For me, I'm going to be downloading the second link which is 1.4 through 1.4.5. Next open up your SD card drive and we're going to start creating folders. The first folder we're going to create is called private. Within that folder, we're going to create the DS folder. Within the DS folder, we're going to create the app folder.
And finally, within the app folder, we're going to create a new folder called 484 capital E 494 capital A. Next, move the memorypit.bin file into the 484 folder. Next, we're going to download the latest release of Twilight Menu++. Scroll down to the twilight menu.7z to download the file. One thing I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video is that you must have 7-zip fully installed on your computer. So if you don't have that already, I'll have that link in the description so you can go download it, install it, and that way you can extract the files here. Open up the new extracted folder. And what we want to do is head on over to the DSi and 3DS SD card users folder. Here we want to copy the boot.nds file and the underscore nds folder into the root of your SD card. Next we're going to go back to the DSI CFW users folder and we want to copy the SD NAND root folder into the root of your SD card. And finally, we're going to copy the underscore NDS folder to the root of your SD card. If you're prompted to replace files in merge folders, just say yes. Now that we have all the files ready to go on our SD card, we can go back on our DSi to launch the exploit. Make sure you insert your SD card before you boot your Nintendo DSi. Once you're fully booted, you want to launch the DSi camera application. Select the SD card icon on the top right and then you want to select your SD card's camera album. If you copy the memory pit correctly to your SD card you should see the screen flash purple or magenta or whatever the color it is and it should boot into Twilight Menu++. Once you're in the Twilight menu, you want to press the select button to switch to the DS Classic menu. And then you want to tap the button at the very bottom to open the settings. And using your L and R buttons, you want to switch over to the settings that's called MISC Settings Page. Go down to the DSiWare Exploit and you want to change that to Memory Pit. Okay, so moving on to the next steps here, we're going to be dumping the whole DSi internal storage to our computer. That way we can save it and we have a backup of our DSi just in case there's a problem with our console if we're installing a certain homebrew that doesn't work. We're going to download the latest release of Dump Tool and we're going to copy that dumptool.nds file into the root of our SD card. We're going to go back to our DSi and we're going to launch the homebrew launcher through our exploit.
So open up the Twilight menu and you should see the dump tool available there to run. Follow the on-screen prompts and this usually takes about 7 to 8 minutes. Once it's finished, hit the start button so you can exit. And what we want to do is power off our console and go back to our PC so we can copy those files we just got and back them up on our PC. The folder we want to copy is the one that has the longest name with a bunch of numbers. That is your backup of your DSi internal memory storage. Now moving on to installing Unlaunch and this is a very powerful exploit that allows us to take full advantage of our hardware and it allows us to get into custom firmware quickly and also provides a brick protection. Scroll down under section 1 and click on the Unlaunch link. That should begin the download for the Unlaunch file. Once the download is finished we want to extract the zip folder and we want to copy the unlaunch folder within the root of our SD card. Back on our DSi, we go through the Twilight menu exploit and run the unlaunch application. On the top screen, we want to select the install option by pressing A. And once completed, you want to reboot your system. After reboot, your DSi should go into the unlaunch homebrew. Next, we want to reconfigure Twilight menu with unlaunch. So navigate to options and go to no button. And what we want to do is select the Twilight option, so boot.nds. Once that's selected, you want to save your settings and reboot the console. Back in your Twilight menu, we want to press select to switch to the DS Classic menu and we want to tap on the button at the very bottom to open the settings. Use the L and R buttons to switch over to the MISC settings page and we want to switch the DSiWare exploit entry to none. And finally, moving on to the final step of this entire hack, and that is installing the Haya custom firmware. This allows you to modify your system without the risk of breaking your internal system, as any changes are simply made to the SD card instead. We're now going to download the latest version of Haya CFW Helper, which is version 3.61, and I'll be using the second link down below. Once downloaded, you want to extract the file by using 7-zip and we want to launch the Haya CFW helper.
click on the three dot button and you want to navigate to find your backup of your DSI. Click open. Once you find that, you want to press start and in the new pop-up window, navigate to the root of your SD card and press OK. This process takes about three to five minutes to complete. When it says done on your pop-up screen, you can now eject your SD card and insert it back into your Nintendo DSi. Power on your Nintendo DSi console while holding the A and B button. Navigate to options, no button, and select the Haya.DSi option. Press A and make sure you save your settings and restart your console. Hold the select button while powering on your Nintendo DSi console to access the Haya CFW settings. Change the settings to your liking and press start to continue. Congratulations, we finally made it to the end and now your Nintendo DSi is fully modded with custom firmware. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another tutorial video in the future. I'll be doing all sorts of different DS content here pretty soon and I'm so excited and I'm so happy you made it this far with me. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And we're gonna do all sorts of fun things with our DSi now that it's fully modded. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys on the next one.